Welcome Houdini community to part 5 of this tutorial series about building an ammonite. In this chapter we will build the node that produces this preview here from the spiral and you remember that line of points. This is actually the whole setup for the whole ammonite. I think I haven't shown that before. So, yeah, it gets quite complex, something like this. Sounds like a simple thing, but in the end, it's more complicated. And actually, could be done a little bit more simple when using more HDAs. But so, now what do we want to do? We want to recreate this one here which creates that nice preview. But we are going to do it a little bit different than here, because I found out while rebuilding this that this could have done it a tad simpler. To start with, we need a subnetwork. And instead of connecting it this way around, I will actually um, connect the line with the 20 points, each one for each chamber, to the first input, and this one to the second input. And give it a nice name. Preview Tutorial Night. So, in the first input, we get the chamber length points. In the second input, we get the curve. First thing, we will, what we need in here is a for loop. And the one we want is for each point. This will get all the points from the line. Okay. Next thing we need is the spiral inside this loop. So what we do is we copy this first node of the for loop and connect this. And now we press P so we get this nice interface here and set it to fetch input instead of piece or point. So it just gets the whole spiral into the network. The spiral now we want to cut into pieces. For that we use a delete node or sop and connect the spiral to it. This will need one spare input. I really like spare inputs. And the spare input, the spare input we need is for each begin. Now, what do we need to write into the different things to start with? We want to run this over points. We want to delete non-selected. And we want to delete by range. Select one of one by pressing Shift and Control. You can delete anything that's already written in there. Now, what do we need to put into start end? We want to read from a point that is in minus one. Minus one is the spare input down here. We want to read point zero because we always have one point now. We run over the point, so it will always be the current point. And we want to read the chamber start, I think I misspelled something again, chamber start. And we want to read the first, it's only an integer, so it, um, it's not like a vector. For a vector, you need to put like 1 here for the y and 0 for the x and z for the 2. And uh, this is the point number, and this is the spare input. This is actually really cool, saves you a lot of typing. Let's copy this. And the end will obviously get chamber 
and like that. So let's have a look if we get what we want. Nice thing when debugging loops is to use the single pass here. So uh, there you go. Lots of segments of the spiral. Actually, it's 20. Great. Mm, what do we need next? We need a copy to point sub. Because now we want to copy circles onto those segments of the loop. Circle. We need to turn that to YZ plane, I think. Put that to YZ plane, and I want to move this to the side. Remember, I don't want it right in the center, but we also need to transform. And I forgot to put this to polygon. 12 divisions is enough for the preview. Put this in here, put this in there, and rotate it here by 90 degrees. And now what we get, let's turn on single pass again, is Let's turn off the points here. Lots of slices. Next thing we want is a skin. Let's put a skin in here. After the skin, we pack it. So, what else do we need? We wanted to color this. So, color, hmm. colore, don't want this, color, that, put that there, they want a different color for each one, so we need an attribute, randomized, the nice thing is this is already set to color, so we don't need to do much to it, but if we turn off single pass, you will see it's just one color. So how to get a different color for each iteration? What we need to do is create a meta input node. Put that down here. The attribute randomize now needs a spare input where we put that into, and now we need to go into the global seed, and what do we need to put into there? We want, in this case, we want to read the detail attribute. Come on. Detail. Again, from the spare input, we want to read the iteration. Zero and just add a number, or whatever. If you change that number, you can change the colorization. Yeah, that's basically it, you might think. But now it's not really fast. Let's clean this up a little bit. I just uh, selected all those nodes and I press A now and drag it down so it gets layouted a little bit nicer. So, next thing would be to multitask this, because if you look at this now, it is cool already, but when you change parameters, it sort of is a little bit sluggish. Let me show you when I actually turn up the cycle divisions, let's say, to something silly like 50. And now I'm trying to change something in here. It already is. You know, it's not smooth. It goes like bang, bang, bang. Okay, go back in here, turn that to 12. But to make it really fast, we can compile this whole thing now with a compile block. Put this there. 
put this here. We need another spare one of this, so copy this one, paste it again, put it here. Compile blocks always need to be, um, they can't have like lines going over the border. So next thing to do is press force compile once, otherwise it sometimes doesn't work. And create an out. For subnetworks, it's always cool, create an out. Actually, when you want more than one output, you just create another output. This has nothing to do here. We only have one output, but I think this is sense to explain. This is output index one. And now that subnetworks has two outputs, that's how you create multiple outputs for a subnetwork. But that was just on the side note. Okay, let's try this now. Yeah, extremely fast and performant. Even with lots more chambers, it doesn't get sluggish. Really cool. Yeah, if you don't compile this, let's say this one here isn't compiled. It looks crap right now. Why? Ah, that way. And if I now change something here, it gets really, really slow. So compiling even makes sense for this. I think whenever you create something like more than a thousand or two thousand points, it can already make sense, depending on the complexity of each step of a loop. Great. This is it for part five of this tutorial. I hope you learned something. See you in the next one.